Some of your favorite actors have used backstage to kickstart their career. Denzel Washington, Al Pacino, Viola Davis, Chris Evans, that's Captain America. And all you have to do to be just like Captain America is go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope at checkout for a 30 day free trial. That's 30 days of access to thousands of casting notices uploaded daily. Subscribe to Backstage today and again, use code envelope at checkout, E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E -E, for free. You can feel that it's not just you and your scene partner, but like the whole space is like ready to make something, some magic, giving all the energy to that like space where it's gonna occur. I could live in that liminal space. You just feel like everything's a little heightened. Everything is like filled with possibility and nerves and the fearlessness of like jumping into this like nothing with all the prep and all the months behind it. Like that space is my favorite, my holy place really. Welcome to another episode of In the Envelope, the Actors Podcast, where the biggest names in film, television, and theater help craft a complete guide to the creative life. I am your host, backstage senior editor, Vinnie Mancuso, and today we are joined by the rare actor you can truly say is one of a kind, the great Catherine Hahn. Now, Catherine has spent just about the last 25 years being the best part of anything she appears in. Uh, maybe you first saw her in Step Brothers or Parks and Rec or even How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Dramatic work in films like Revolutionary Road and Afternoon Delight. But there's no denying that a larger audience was introduced to Catherine's talent when she was cast as Marvel's resident witch Agatha Harkness in the MCU series WandaVision. Uh, now, Catherine's leading the spinoff. Agatha All Along, uh, which is a really great showcase for her wide, wide range of talent, as well as the chemistry she has with co-stars like Aubrey Plaza and Patti Lapone, two legends. We talked about all of it here, from her earliest days in the acting industry to what it's like to have so many quote-unquote breakout moments over the course of a decades-long career. Uh, it's a really, really wonderful chat. Let's get right into it. Here is Katherine Hahn. Catherine, it's so good to see you. It's so oh, good it's very nice to meet you and see you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for being here. We, we smoothly, seamlessly got you in here. We got yes. the, everything up to speed. Well, I'm very tech um, tech savvy. So yes. anytime you have any questions, I'm the, definitely the one to send Absolutely. Absolutely. A, Western, a Western telegram to. <laughs> um, how are you doing? How's it going? I'm uh, really good. Yeah, Are we, we're number one of the day. Hopefully the only one today. How's, how's your schedule? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I have um, I'm picking up my daughter and her friends after school, which is always the cutest madness. She's 15. Love that. Um, yeah, it's 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 a chill day for well, sure. We have plenty to talk about, um, you know, Agatha all along, you know, it, 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 it has arrived. I'm curious, you know, this is a show you were announced in the role 2019. Uh, and this was it that long? Wait, I, it, well, this is oh, this, for Agatha, yes, for, for, for the role, division. the role itself. But yes, this show Agnes. was the, the show was announced in like 2021. It was, yes. it was it's, I'm, I'm always curious, you know, when it's been that, that much time to just sit with something. Does it change? Does the time change the way you think about it? Because you, you filmed, you, it was announced, you filmed it, and now you get to talk about it a lot. Yes, you know, do each of those stages sort of change the way you think about it? Does anything change in, in the time that goes into it? Well, for sure. I mean, now, you know, it's like they say about childbirth, you forget the pain <laughs> after all this time. Not that it was in any way painful, but it was definitely, definitely took so much out of us. I mean, this was a behemoth and thank God for this cast because, and for Jack Schaefer and Mary Lovanos. I, I mean, everybody, it was such a, it was such a um, like we kept calling it trials within trials within trials because there's trials in the show. And then there was like and it was because it was so incredibly ambitious and we were so all so wanted it to work exactly how Jack had seen it in her mind. And I'm just can't believe that we accomplished that. I'm so proud. And of course, yeah, we did it 
it's such a blur. We did it the January after WandaVision aired. And then, you know, there was a lot of things out of our control. There was um, mm-hmm. this, this strike definitely was for everybody, a, definitely kind of delayed us being able to air earlier, which, you know, we would have loved to. But ultimately, this is exactly when it was supposed to come out. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just felt like this is exactly the right timing. I mean, we the first episodes were after the harvest moon. Like, you know, it was all perfect. Halloween's coming up. But, you know, there wasn't that much time between WandaVision and Agatha all along. Jack and my, I suppose, what we wanted to keep from Agatha and WandaVision, our visions really lined up. And I trust her so implicitly. And I just think she's such a genius. And I say that with, I know it can be just thrown around, but I really think her mind is incredibly special. And her idea of flow is so special. So I'm, Mm -hmm. this was creatively. And so I just felt very excited just to read it for sure. So to answer your question, (laughs) it, my idea of Agatha, of course changed because we only saw her in a couple ways, I think during WandaVision and we knew that there was so much more to mine. It was just, there was not time in that show, obviously. And I mean, Lizzie and Paul are like, so when that became an opportunity, which I never in a million years would have seen coming, the thought of being able to like get in there a little bit more and open her up a little bit more was thrilling. Absolutely. Well, I'm 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 happy we 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 started there, and I'm happy you sort of brought up the idea of you know you you, you forget about the process through time because you know we as you know this is backstage and we we yeah I love we, backstage. Are, are, we appreciate we definitely appreciate that, and we also appreciate you know hearing about the journey to get to here. So you know, so before we talk about I guess all along and all this stuff, I, I do want to back up you know and, and, and talk about the whole thing at Northwestern. You know, you yeah. you, you you had a a, a great training program. You did a ton of shows there. You know, you did like The Woods, Uncle Vanya, uh, Fefu and her friends, I believe. And, and yeah. Ophelia uh, and Hamlet uh, that had a, I, I, I'm curious, you know, I'm always curious about the, when you're in training, you're doing shows and it's partly to do the role, but also to learn. Is there any moment or show or character that you played during your training that, that felt especially formative or, 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 you know, was a moment where you're like, oh, there's something here. There's something here that I'm, I'm, I'm understanding on a different level. Yes, I think the Maria Irene Fornes play Fefo and her friends playing uh, Julia, and that really was formative for me. It was, it's interesting to actually think about that now in the context of where I am right now. It was all women, woman director, and that play, I don't know if you know the structure. Do you know the structure of that play? I do not. I'd love to hear about it. It's, oh, there's four, you know, they all, they all, the first scene is all of them together, a bunch of friends. And then the second act is basically four different scenes, but the audience moves from scene to scene. So they get to hear Hmm. pieces of the other scenes bleeding through. It takes place in one house and it's um, gorgeously written. And I basically was my part of Julia was like, I basically laid in this bed and gave this very, very, very long monologue. That was very difficult. I remember because it was, she was, you know, having like a mental, like she was definitely in a, hallucinatory, delusional state. And the other women were, I think I was the youngest woman, I could be wrong, in the cast. But I just remember that feeling of abandon and authorship. I always say that when I talk about the theater, there is something so freeing about not having an editor and not having someone else call action and cut, like once the (laughs) curtain is up, that I that kind of feeling of abandon and just surrender i i think i've never forgotten are are you the type of person actor that thinks back to you know stuff like that in a way that's like oh that that feels a little full circle or you know the thing i'm doing now i think i learned from that or is it all just sort of in there you know in the toolbox i think the older i've gotten the more i can see full circle how things have actually aligned in exactly the way they were supposed to. When you're starting out and you just say yes to anybody that will have you, you know, because in my case, I had so much debt. I was like, after Northwestern, I was working at a hair salon, which I love, but definitely wasn't like, you know, I was a receptionist. (laughs) There wasn't a lot of creativity. 
But I, I think now looking back, nothing, you know, anybody's life, you can't, you, no one would be there where we just have no idea when we're in something, what that means for the rest of our life. Like you've no idea as low as you feel like it is, you don't know during that low period, what is how that fits into the story of your life. So definitely there were huge, huge chunks of, should I do this anymore? I can't, the rejection was so daunting, which I think is very familiar to anybody that is passionate about this way of life. But I do feel like now, like I said, even with you thinking about that play in terms of this coven, like a coven to coven Mm -hmm. as being like very, I never thought of it before. And that's, it's pretty beautiful. Amazing. We we love a full circle moment. I I, I, I love I a full circle. It feels very like, it actually does feel very witchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it, these things work out, you know, these, yeah. <laughs> these things do everything. I can't like, don't you think too, that it's not like the more I, the older I get, the more it's not linear. Mm-hmm. It's just keeps being this spiral of everything being, of course, like when you're young, you just see, you just have so much hope and there's just so much like forward thinking that it's hard to think back as you're going through it. So, you know, now I feel like there is a luxury of being this age is being able to connect all those dots. Well, partially because you, you did all the work to get here. You know, it's, it's, it feels full circle because you set yourself up to be here. So this is, you, you, you yeah. this is what you want, where you want to be. So when you get there, you're like, Oh, you know, this feels like what I was thinking, but it's cause you, you did the work to get there. It's, 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 well, that's interesting, Vinny, because I would say there's so many, I feel very, I had to crapshoot at a certain, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I guess there's so many beautiful performers that could say that both of us could say have done the, the work for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess I never knew that the most juicy part of it all would happen after kids. Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, you never know. You mentioned that, you know, you, you had that, that, that time after graduation where I, you, know, you spent a lot of time in New York, you know, and you were, yes. you were auditioning and stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, and I've, I've asked this question, a lot of people who, who sort of, you know, went through that, that New Yorkish phase of auditioning and stuff like that. What, what was the sort of the want, you know, the driving want there? And is it similar at all mm-hmm. to what it is now? Or, or is, or is that sort of, you know, changed as the, the career goes on? Oh, that's such a good question. I mean, New York is the best, like we, my friend and I would always say it's the best place for the very young or the very, the very young and broke or the very, or the older and rich. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like that's, it's, that's it is, it's the best place when you're in your twenties to be broke and hungry and inspired and just the, you know, the walking and the, tra- like the train, the bodega guy who knows your order. And like, I would, I think I've said this to your publication before, you know, backstage was our, we would go to Astor Place and every Wednesday would just be in a long line to pick it up and then flip through the auditions in the back. It was like a touchstone was the when it was print, like a newspaper almost, but we, it wasn't in such a beautiful glossy form, which I love too now, but it was being there. Honestly, it was just about getting a, a yes, just being able to do it. I didn't have the luxury again, I was like swimming in debt. I didn't have the luxury of even thinking about, you know, Hollywood or being a star. I, I really didn't. That wasn't even my, I never had thought about that. It was just, I wanted to work. And so for a while, because the universe was saying like, you're never going to get paid for it. It became like, you know, something I would do. I would, that's all I would think about, but I had had to have a day job. So it just became something. And then Williamstown started. I got into Williamstown and that became like the juiciest summers. And I guess when I think about my career now, because I have kids and because time is so, is precious in a different way, and because the things have happened to be in a place right now where I can say yes or no, that feels like never in a million years would I thought that that could be a possibility. I, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this so I don't get in trouble from my 
<laughs> from the people who pay for this podcast. But what's is there a particular oh, color audi- intrigue? Is, is there a particular audition Ooh. you got from backstage that was you know interesting? <laughs> or um, mem- yes. memorable or my first... I don't want to say worst I don't say what's the worst audition you got from backstage but what's the memorable yeah at my first play was in New York and I missed my grandmother's 80th birthday party for it because I was like I have to do it it was called Bar None and it was at a the- what's that famous theater that's like on the Lower East Side Ugh. gosh Catherine it's a memory play But it was kind of like well known anyway. Mm -hmm. I, but I remember it was was not well written. I shouldn't say that. But I was so excited to get it, and the lead actress's name was literally Avocado Pit, (laughs) and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, and I fell madly in love with her. So that was a pretty rad experience. But it was one of those plays again where like you could do it if you found twenty people to come (laughs) and pay for the tickets. There's, there's, so it was a real exists. like I'm psyched, and then like oh right. So I was still having almost to, even going to Williamstown. It's I felt like when I, I was still in a phase of like of paying to act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, those those still absolutely exist. They um, do. Yeah. Shout out to Avocado Pit if you're listening. Oh, shout but... out to Avocado Pit. We Got miss us. you. Come back, please. Yes. She was like, um, call me Avi. And I was like, I <laughs> will call you Avocado absolutely. or Ms. Pitt. I love that. That's I me too. exactly what I was looking for. Um, yeah. I, I I am, you know, I, for these conversations, you know, I go back and I look at, at tons of reviews and, and interviews and stuff like that and, and look for through lines throughout careers and stuff like that. And something I found mm. so interesting, you know, reading about you is how many different roles were sort of categorized as, you know, breakout or, you know, audiences are finally meeting <laughs> Catherine Hahn. And that's, you know, kept happening. And I, I even, I read a review of Agatha all along that, you know, they called it your like upteenth breakout moment. <laughs> Do you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I'm curious, but where that exists for you, you know, this idea that, that, that you keep having breakout moments when, you know, I, what does that mean <laughs> for you? I don't know. I mean, I think I know what it means. I think it's like I've, you know, I've had in this like awesome unfolding of a life doing this. I've had a lot of great opportunities that have like I thought would go on and then they did it or they were supposed to be the thing and then they didn't end up being it. But, you know, uh, I think I'm going to take it that it just means I've still been able to exist kind of exactly where I feel like I am the most comfortable, like a a little bit around the edges of it, Mm -hmm. like around the fridges. Like I love hanging out with a crew. Like, honestly, I love a crew and I love an ensemble. So I kind of love that kind of stuff more than I do. And my beautiful publicist is on, but more than I do about like even the press stuff or whatever. So I feel like, even though this is the best, like whatever, (laughs) But this is fun, I should say. But I I do feel more comfortable in the like scrappy part of it, I think. And so I don't know what if that means I think breakout probably means like a huge all of a sudden she's a star or whatever. Like I I blessedly feel like that's noise that doesn't have to concern me. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. But it is interesting. I feel like maybe it's because I've been able to slip into different genres and like Mm -hmm. kind of feel like, a you know, I've been able to be here, be there. And so I I think maybe people feel like they're still discovering me or they think of me just as maybe the person from these big swing comedies, which I love so much that if they see me do anything else, it's like, whoa. But Mm -hmm. that's kind of a I love that about this. That's why I went into the theater is because I love a rep company. Mm hmm. I'm curious from from your perspective as as the, the person behind all these these various breakouts. Which is there a role that you most did actually feel a shift? You know, like actually did. If, what 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 would you consider? What would you consider your breakout role? Well, it's a different answer for. Also, I shouldn't say that I don't like press. I should say I don't feel comfortable sometimes doing press. <laughs> totally. Um. Oh, see, I'm a recovering Catholic. <laughs> but I 
I think the it's interesting because there's a difference between what I feel was a game changer for myself as a performer in this medium, these mm-hmm. mediums, and what was, I guess, considered the outside world's opinion of a game changer. I think for me, it was the summer I got to do Step Brothers and Revolutionary mm-hmm. Road in the same summer because I just felt like exactly what I had been hoping for this whole career was that, that feeling of being able to do both in the, the space of a summer. It was like Williamstown on camera. It mm-hmm. was like the best feeling. And my kid was really young and he was able to come with me. And and so I, I did feel like after Step Brothers came out, that was a big shift. And these, you know, and then I think personally as an actor in this medium of like film and television, I think it was Afternoon Delight, which was not seen by that many people, but it holds a very dear place in my heart because of what that group learned together, making it of what was possible. And again, that feeling of abandon and surrender that I'd felt doing theater. It was the first time I'd really felt it on camera. Besides mm-hmm. Step Brothers, I did feel it there too. Absolutely. That makes total sense. I'm, I, as we, you know, you mentioned the sort of different environments you have to exist in as, as an actor. I, I, I read that the, the, the role of Agatha for, WandaVision came as a result of a general a general meeting. General meetings are sort of a bit of a mystery to aspiring actors as to what they are or why you do them and stuff like that. So I'm I'm curious, you know, as as, as someone who, who landed this role after a general, what is the approach? <laughs> what is the you know? I, I I don't think there's a game plan or anything like that. But what is what is the role of the general meeting for an actor? Again, a really good question because when I would do them at the beginning, like when I was in New York right after grad school. And I would just be running around taking generals and I would feel like I had to kind of sell myself and I wasn't exactly sure what that meant. I was trying to like shape shift and whatever I thought that that person or that, that studio that they were representing wanted. And I think that again, age, yada, yada, but I, or just, I think there's a many, many young people that are able to do this, which I'm like, hats off, but I think it was literally having no expectation and I just kind of showed up. I never thought if I would be in a Marvel situation. It was kind of set up through my manager and I knew a lot of people that performed in it. I knew about Marvel for my kids, but I never imagined in a million years. Like, cause I mean, you know, like sometimes you do a general and then sometimes you never, it's rare that you ever hear anything again. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you do but it's usually about other work that they've seen or that other work that has gotten some recognition. So I, I didn't have, I didn't have any, everyone was lovely, but I didn't have any really hopes for it. And then it was, I think the next day. So I would say to an actor that you don't know what could be down the pipe or somewhere behind those people's eyeballs that they're looking at you for specifically and that they want you to just bring yourself. So It's almost like you have to forget about what this could be and just meet some nice people and like just bring yourself and just feel as like, you know, I had a person, um, I had a therapist once, a person that said, bring God there first. And so like, that's a really good thing if you're nervous or if you're, I always said, send God there first, whatever God means to you is like, so you just walk in the room like, hey, like, so it doesn't feel like anything that other than a conversation with nice people. Mm-hmm. It sounds a lot like, you know, kind of what we do here is, is you, yeah. you, you prep and you prep, you prep, you prep, and then you show up and you hope that you don't need any of that. <laughs> you hope that the idea yes. is that you're, you, you, you want to go unprepared, but the hope is that you don't look at your notes at all. You just sort of. Yeah. Well, that's like acting room. too. Right. You, you show up as prepared as possible and you're like, hope that that magic happens where it, all of that can just sink in and d- be somewhere in your the molecules you know and then you can just like be present with that with your scene partner mm. so i do i do want to talk about agatha all along and I'm, i i especially from a performance standpoint it it like wandavision you know plays with tropes plays with so much I'm, I'm curious i'm always curious for actors who are doing something like that about walking the tightrope of you know parody homage love letter where where the audience has to understand what you're parroting but mm. you don't want to be making fun of it <laughs> you know, do you yeah know I mean? no like it, it, but it has to be broad enough to be recognizable but not broad enough to be like mean <laughs> so I, i'm curious yeah. about, about walking that that tightrope 
Well, I'm a huge fan of that kind of show. I loved Mayor of Easttown. I loved Broadchurch. I loved The Killing. All of those like female led, they're my, mm, I I, like love those shows. Mm -hmm. So this felt very, very much like we needed to take it really seriously with enough cracks, especially er early on that, that it didn't feel like it was like a straight, just what's happening here. Is she a detective now? Mm -hmm. So that was a fine, that was a really fine line to, to play, especially at the beginning of the episode. But also Jack Schaefer and her amazing writing, it was important that we throw the scent off at the beginning, that this would be the perfect genre for her to be in after playing the nosy neighbor for the last three years and probably a lot of different, in her mind, different worlds. And in this one, I we really love the idea of a prestige crime procedural is would be the exactly the one that that Agatha would would find right on. Or I don't even think she was conscious about it. I mean, she wasn't. She just kind of happened as she was questioning what she what was happening. As, you know, a performer, how do you sort of coordinate the dial of of how much you're leaning into the to the tropes that the homage and how much of it is, you know, just the demands of the scene, <laughs> the, the wants, the yeah. objectives and stuff like that. I think it's more the latter. I think it's just all in the writing. Like mm-hmm. that'll guide, that'll guide you into, in terms of what is necessary. And for those of us that could go real big, <laughs> myself included, you know, you just, that's, that's such a, that's the guiding force as you'll know exactly what's necessary. And I love a director. So I'm, and I throw all my trust into that person. And so I felt very comfortable. Like I, I, you know, sometimes it feels so simpatico that we're like, and especially if it's the writer director that I feel like I'm looking out of her eyeballs into the world. And so we felt very like, I felt in very good hands tonally, you know, you just have to surrender. We had um, Aubrey Plaza, a great Aubrey Plaza on this show I think it was literally like an hour after she was announced to be in. Agatha oh my Long. god! So I think we were like the first people to be like, "Hey, that's cool." And you know, Very we, we cool. talked a lot about it, and she was just sort of, you know, she, the the thing that was so interesting. She said she signed on. It was kind of cool that it's Marvel. It's cool that it's it's what it's about. But she signed on for Catherine Hahn. She signed on because of you. Oh my gosh! I'm 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 always curious, you know, about about stuff like that. What does it mean to to have? anyone involved with the project that you know is is has your back like that and and you know what does that oh, mean for it, for the project itself it's extraordinary like you want to have the best team you want the best team always like and she's incredible and so and in this part is incredible so the scenes we have together are so rich they're some of my favorite in the show like because they're so textured and rich and unexpectedly like icky and dark and I just love the vibe. And that's like, again, something that you can't predict or you can't, you know, I had, I had known her passing the halls and parks and rec. Um, but I know we'd always wanted to work together. I admire her so much and I love what's like happening. Like it just, so I'm so could not be more happy for and proud of that human. And so to know somebody has your back like that is, of course, first a little bit like, oh my God, I hope I live up to her expectations hmm. <laughs> of anybody's. And then second, it's like, okay, we, she came to play. So it feels really, felt very meaty and really good for the ensemble. Like, because especially since this is a bunch of covenless witches, like to have each other's backs like that was everything. Like this show kind of lived or died on the chemistry between all of us. And I think Jack would agree yeah, it's everything. You mentioned chemistry, and it's something that we talk about a lot on the show because we, we, we get a lot of answers about it. You know, whether you know, yeah. some, people, some people are like, oh, it doesn't it doesn't exist. It's just acting. Some people are like, it's vital. It's vital to the scene. I need it. So I'm. I, this is a show, you know, not just between you and Aubrey, but yeah. everybody that, that sort of, like you said, rides and tides on the chemistry. Yeah. Where does that live in in? In your actorly brain, you know, like what what is what does it mean to a performance to have chemistry, and is it more personal, professional, or a mix of the both? Another good question, Vinny. To me, chemistry. I've 
there's very few people that I have not been able to find whatever that is Mm -hmm. between action and cut. And even like, even outside of it, I just feel, I mean, I love actors sometimes like, like Aubrey and I, we didn't talk that much about it. We kind of would send each other like very opaque pieces of music or poems and, but we never would really talk about the scene. We kind of just jumped into it. And it was just like, because I think it was like, we started on such a subconscious level, like of what we sent to each other, but, and some other actors need to talk about it. Like some actors really need to go through the scene and the history and really make it clear. And I'm so game for that also. And so that's its own kind of chemistry. You know, I I think that depending on the bird, even if the relationship is antagonistic or something that's not as like, that there's like, ob, you know, obstacles in the way of them just connecting into, that's the best. I mean, no one wants to see like, so that kind of magic is because there is safety somewhat. I mean, it doesn't have to be like, but there is definitely safety and, and um, care for the other person. Like Joe Locke and I, like, I feel like that Mm -hmm. was instantaneous. Also, I just like, we both just locked eyes and it was like, oh, I've got you. Like, and he's, he had me, like, I just, we just knew. And so, yeah, I think it, I don't, I think it's imperative because no matter what you feel on the outside of the action and cut, and I've been really blessed that I haven't really had, like, I haven't had anything that's been like, it's all been in the soup of the making of it, you have, you know, I think like that kind of vibe is so important, but I, you have to, that's where the stuff is. Otherwise it's dead theater. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why we love asking about it because it, there's so much to it. That's just like indescribable. It's, it's, it's it's there and in the air, you know, it, you know, it, you know, it. when it's not there, you know what it is, but it's, it happens and it's recognizable. Let's not yeah. dive too deep into it. It's 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 just a feeling. It's a it's something. I remember though when I was when I was first doing like TV and even movies that the more seasoned actors that my best experiences were when I felt so as an equal and that I felt like I could really show up and be brave and not be and fearless and not be like nervous. And doing like tariff, like, and that was like my own stuff too. Like I was just so intimidated and whatever, but I do feel now that the more good vibes and more like support, it makes for that kind of crackling shit Mm. to happen. This is not, you know, the type of conversation we're all trying to ask, you know, where are you going to show up next? You know, where where will I get to be next? But I'm, I'm, I'm the, from the outside, it's sort of the thing that when somebody is in the MCU, they're in the MCU, you know, it's, it's, mm. it's a, it's a, it's a whole deal. I, I'm curious, you know, what it's, we, we, we mentioned this is, this has been going on since 2019. What has it been like having this big thing alongside mm. everything else you're doing as an actor? You know, they, it's now just occupying this big space. Boom. Here's the MCU, but you're also making decisions about other projects and other roles yeah. and stuff like that. What is that? What has that been like to have that in your life? It's this amazing part I've gotten to play like that this is while we were making of it the scale still felt very you know seven of us so it felt very tight and small and so it's never been like now I'm this for Mm. all and for all eternity this is just an incredible part at this incredible at this moment of in my life that just happened to land so weirdly perfectly and but who knows? You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm still doing other stuff. I, I still don't feel like completely defined by her. Mm-hmm. Although if I am, there would be, you know, worse things. I love her madly. So, yeah, it's, this feels it feels integrated in the rest of my life as a performer. But it's something that I still cannot believe I get to play a witch. Like it's and in them. So it's so crazy and fun. Is there, um, you know, I, I, I'm always curious talking to any actor who is not on social media, especially mm-hmm. somebody who's not on social media and in something like the MCU, because, you know, <laughs> reactions and, and all kinds of kinds of stuff. What has not <laughs> being on social media 
done for you as an actor. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about, about sort of operating without all that noise because mm. the noise is such a part of it now. <laughs> the, the, I know. the noise is such, people who are just getting started now, the noise is baked in. It's so I'm much. curious about, about what that has meant to you to make a conscious decision to not have the noise. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing as like, for, for me, it's weirdly the same thing as like looking at a monitor between takes that it's kind of a weird mirror. That's not totally correct. It's like, it doesn't really show my experience of it. And so it's just distracts from me being really present. And I mean, I read reviews much to like, it's like I do because I love hearing the feedback and sometimes it's like, oof, but it's just a part of the life we live. And, but it is, you know, sometimes like, ah, and you, you know, actors only remember the really bad ones, of course, but you know, I've been sniffing around Instagram as a possibility just because I think that would be the most easy, but I, I think, I think for me not having to engage like that or live my life thinking about something to post is, I mean, it started off as laziness, honestly, and just my, being a techno, you know, technology phobe a little bit. I'm analog. I like to, I like a hard copy. Completely Penny. understandable. Physical media. Um, love it. I need to, I like a hard copy. I got to get my highlighter out, <laughs> but I, uh, I think it's helped keep me away from opinions that are not my business. If good or bad, it's like, it's all gravy. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't know. It's all exciting that there is an, the, the, you know, I don't know. It just feels distracting. However, there are a lot of amazing humans out there that it would be fun to, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird answer because I know people that have to do it and people that just have people do it or they have, you know, and so I don't know. I'm sniffing around. Yeah, we'll you're see. out there. Let the people know you are. I mean, I'm not there. I'm not there yet. <laughs> not yet. No, no. I'm thinking um, about thinking about it. I love that. So as we sort of wrap up here, there's 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 something I'd like to ask, you know, pretty often because when I think about acting, all the the strange parts of it, something that I'm always so interested in is that weird liminal space, like right mm. before they call action, you know, mm. where you're just you're sort of you, not you, you're somewhere else, you're there. So I'm I'm curious when you look back on your career, it could be Agatha, it could be anything, the most memorable pre-action moment you've ever had in your career. Oh my gosh. Oh, there are some pretty magical ones. And maybe this is because my memory is like, what? But there is some, were some pretty ma magical ones on Agatha because we also had to like really find the magic again practically and so but not just in that show it was i think like there's a gent when the feeling is that there is this like heightened kind of holy hush this is for something that's maybe like a little heavier comedy is different comedy it's like you know you just gotta fling yourself into it with no like you gotta it's better just like because again if you like get in here sometimes you but like that kind of quiet hush where everybody in the crew is also like invested. Like you can feel that it's not just you and your scene partner, but like the whole space is like ready to make something, some magic happen and giving all the energy to that like space where it's going to occur. That is my, that is like, I could live in that liminal space. I love it. Like that, like height, you just feel like everything's a little heightened. Everything is like filled with possibility and nerves and also just the thrill of it. Like the, the like fearlessness of like jumping into this, like nothing is with all the prep and all the like months behind it. Like that's that kind of, that space is my, is my favorite. Love yeah. That. My holy place really. It's incredible. Catherine, this was an absolute pleasure. Oh, Thank you so much for being here. Vinny, uh, again, I apologize for my tech unsavviness, oh, but now I know how to turn my notifications just off. Leave so everything thank you, the way backstage. it is now, and you'll never have <laughs> yes. a problem again. Okay. I'm not touching anything uh, from then. now on. One more gift from backstage. Yes. Oh, backstage. 
Um, but again, thank you so much. Oh my and gosh, it was such a pleasure talking to you. This was great. Hopefully we can uh, talk again soon. I really hope so. I love your posters too. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Take Bye. care. Have a good day. Thanks, as always, to our brilliant producer, Jamie Muffet, and to the whole team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com, and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage with code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. 100% free, you simply cannot beat that. For more exclusive content, find us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope, and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Who should we interview next? Let us know. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another peek in the envelope.